The film you're about to see has been independently produced. It has received no funding from any political or community organization. All of the information in this video was freely available. On Sunday the 20th of May 2012, a piece of news was received in the state of Queensland that has the potential to affect thousands across the state. The State Minister for Health, Lawrence Springborg, released a media statement detailing how the Queensland Government plans to pull funding from the Queensland Association for Healthy Communities. News of the funding cut spread quickly through Facebook, Twitter and other social networking platforms. The Queensland Association for Healthy Communities, or QUAC as it's more commonly known, is the state's only LGBT health organisation. After these funding cuts, QUAC will stand to lose $2.5 million in funding along with 26 of its 35 staff and all of its support and education programs in relation to HIV and gay men. For me, perhaps the most shocking element to this news isn't that the funding is being pulled. It's that the reasons for the removal of funds seem to be riddled with inaccuracies and confusing statements that have left many questioning the motivations behind this move. The purpose of this video is to expose the injustice currently taking place in Queensland. If after watching this, you feel that you need to do something to help, then I have succeeded. Before we get to the heart of the matter, it's important that you know some things. In 1984, the world was in the throes of the HIV AIDS epidemic. HIV does not discriminate, and globally more heterosexual people than homosexual people are living with the virus. During the 80s in Australia, the epidemic particularly impacted on the gay male population. This unfortunately led to some very anti-gay reactions from some politicians and other people. It was out of the concern for what this newly arrived AIDS virus could mean for Queensland's homosexual community that a group of brave individuals formed an organisation called the Queensland AIDS Council. This organisation focused on educational, charitable and community goals and provided support to a vulnerable group of people who were appallingly neglected by the then Queensland Government. For GLBTIQ people living in Queensland during the 80s and 90s, life wasn't easy. Homosexual acts were still criminal offences in Queensland until 1990, and the Queensland LGBTIQ people had a fearful and dark past under the Vielke Peterson government. Throughout this time period, acts of violence against sexually diverse people weren't really considered criminal, and employers were legally allowed to dismiss workers on the basis of sexual orientation. Despite a repressive political climate, the organisation persevered thanks to some truly dedicated staff, volunteers, financial donors and supporters. Wise financial management, a changing state government and ongoing support from the Federal Health Minister and Federal Government all helped the organisation to survive. In 2006, the Queensland AIDS Council recognised its shifting role by altering its name to the Queensland Association for Healthy Communities, or QUAC. While maintaining a focus on HIV prevention, broader LGBT health and welfare issues were also accorded importance. The organisation continued to positively impact the lives of LGBT Queenslanders until the 20th of May 2012. The announcement came as a shock to many, especially those within Quack, who had recently made 29 new recommendations to the new government to try to reduce HIV transmission rates. Mr Springborg has given two reasons to justify this massive funding cut to Quack. In his media statement, Mr Springborg said that annual HIV diagnosis rates had doubled in the last decade, and that this represented an alarming figure in HIV public health policy and public health outcomes. Mr Springborg also stated that Quack has published its intention to move the core of its activity away from AIDS and HIV, 
to more general political issues. Within the GLBTIQ community, this is largely thought to mean that Quack is seen as a political threat to the new government. So let's have a look at these two reasons for the funding cut in detail, as there seems to be some considerable blurring of the facts to justify his decision. On the question of the increasing rate of HIV transmission, Mr Springborg has quoted the following statistic. Annual HIV rates have doubled in the last decade, from 2.7 per 100,000 population in the year 2000 to 5.4 per 100,000 population in the year 2010. This statement is grossly misleading. Queensland Health releases an annual report to identify trends in HIV and AIDS notifications over time. The report depicts notification rates of HIV diagnosis by year and includes a breakdown of whether the diagnosis first occurred in Queensland or overseas and also provides a combined total for first diagnosis. As you can see here, when Mr Springborg says 2.7 per 100,000 in the year 2000, it refers to only where the first diagnosis was in Queensland, whereas 5.4 per 100,000 in the year 2010 refers to total first diagnosis. It would appear that in his statement, he's comparing apples with oranges. Now cities like San Francisco are currently reporting 25% HIV prevalence among gay men. In Queensland, prevalence is around 8.8%. Furthermore, according to the Queensland Government's own statistics, as a percentage of total HIV infection rates in Queensland, infections among gay men have fallen from 73.5% in 2005 to 63.1% in 2010. Quack is funded only to combat HIV transmission amongst gay men, and by these government statistics, they appear to be pretty good at it. So Mr Springborg's argument that the HIV prevention strategy in Queensland has been a failure is a bit hard to believe. Furthermore, if he's all that concerned about the rate of HIV transmission, then surely his best plan would be to work together with Quack, who have over 28 years experience in this field, rather than abolishing Quack's funding altogether. Quack is not the only organisation responsible for reducing HIV transmission rates. Queensland Health has a major responsibility in the area, but Quack is the only one who's encouraged the GLBTIQ community to demand equal rights in the area of health. Now let's have a look at Mr Springborg's second justification for the removal of funding to Quack. QAHC has published its intention to move the core of its activity away from AIDS and HIV to more general political issues. HIV prevention is not an isolated issue. It is widely recognised that to successfully reduce HIV transmission rates, you need to improve the health and well-being of the LGBT community in general. This means that successful HIV prevention strategies need to address the physical health and mental health of LGBT people, and hence they must take into account factors such as drug use, alcohol use, stigmatisation and discrimination. This is the approach taken by Quack, and it's why Quack tries to reduce discrimination against LGBT people, which is obviously something that requires a certain amount of political activism. The United Nations supports this type of approach, as published in their Strategic Direction for the Global HIV Response that advocates advancing human rights and gender equality for the HIV response. But why would the new government be so opposed to Quack's role in opposing LGBT discrimination? During the recent state election campaign, the LNP stated that it would overturn the recently introduced civil partnership legislation, which for the first time allowed LGBT Queenslanders to have legally recognised civil partnerships. Naturally, this proposal to overturn same-sex civil partnerships resulted in some fierce opposition from the LGBT community during the election campaign. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that if the new Queensland government intends to overturn the same-sex civil partnership legislation, they might think that they'll face less of a backlash from the LGBT community if they first remove the LGBT community's voice by cutting Quack's funding. 
In other words, first silence the LGBT community by getting rid of quack, then overturn same-sex civil partnerships. Minister Springborg has stated that HIV prevention funding is not to disappear completely. It is to be redirected to a ministerial advisory committee, which would be under the control of the minister and hence would not be a political threat. So it seems we have the real reason for removing Quack's funding, to try to silence the LGBT community. So now that you have a bit of insight, it's time for you to do something. How can you help? Get involved. Share this video with everyone you can in your social network. Visit the Healthy Communities website at www.qahc.org.au. There you'll find lots of points and links on how you can get involved. You can sign a community-led petition calling for the funding to be reinstated. There's also information on how to contact the Health Minister and the Premier. You can donate to the Healthy Communities Fighting Fund. Join the campaign on Facebook or use the hashtag SaveQAHC on Twitter. Contact your local member of parliament and ask them to support QAHC and the LGBT community. Encourage your friends, family, colleagues and other contacts to take action and send testimonials. There are lots of people getting on board. But what we need to remember is that to incite change in politicians, we have to strike in the only place that is sure to get a reaction, at the polls. Even though we just had state elections, a large part of a politician's job is still keeping their constituents happy. To keep constituents happy, they're likely to make change. The key in our fight for equality is to make sure this stays current and let them know it's not going away. Share. Write. Speak and don't stop. This cause is too important for you to do nothing and there's no time to waste. The defunding of Quack is just the tip of an enormous iceberg that will have a lasting and devastating effect on equal rights. Whether you think you're a part of our community or not, this will eventually affect you. We may be a minority, but it's not like there's only 10 of us. So act now and remember, that when you say nothing, you're letting someone else speak for you.